Have you ever felt that something's off with hydrogen energy in space engineers? I've got myself thinking about it quite a lot. And based on the comments under the heat management system release video, I'm definitely not alone. There are some obvious misalignments like how hydrogen thrusters and engines don't use oxygen. But when I dug deeper, it turned out the entire gas system in Space Engineers is broken beyond repair. So, to understand why, let's start from the very beginning, how ice actually turns into gas in Space Engineers. A typical O2 H2 generator produces 500 liters of hydrogen and 250 liters of oxygen per second. The ratio feels about right, because a water molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. But to do this, it consumes an enormous 50 liters of ice per second. Why enormous? Well. Time for a little trip into chemistry. Hold on to your stomachs. So, how do we figure out how much gas we can get from ice? Parameters we need are the molar mass of water and the molar volume of gases. For simplicity, let's treat 1 liter of ice as 1 liter of water. The molar mass of water is 18 grams per mole. So, one liter of water contains roughly 56 moles. During electrolysis, each molecule of water produces two molecules of hydrogen and one of oxygen. Which means from one liter of water we get 56 moles of hydrogen and 28 moles of oxygen. Now, at STP, standard temperature and pressure, one mole of gas occupies about 22 liters. So, those 56 moles of H2 become about 1232 liters of hydrogen, and the 28 moles of O2 becomes about 616 liters of oxygen. That's already higher than space engineers' numbers. But wait. That's just for one liter of water. For 50 liters, which the generator consumes per second, it should be around 62,000 liters of hydrogen and 31,000 liters of oxygen. Madness, right? And that's where the first big gap between science and space engineers shows up. But maybe the game is talking about the liquid form, not gases. Actually, no. All gases in Space Engineers are stored as compressed gas. For example, a vanilla large grid small hydrogen tank takes about 31 cubic meters of space, yet holds 1 million liters of gas. That means the gas is stored at around 32 bar, 32 atmospheres. This is far below the compression needed to liquefy them. That explains why in vanilla we have to shovel insane amount of ice into generators, doesn't it? But don't get me wrong, I'm not blaming Kin. They had to balance the game, my goal, however, is to make it realistic. And that explains why in my mod the O2H2 generator is a lot more efficient. 100% efficiency instead of vanilla's 1%. And that's realistic, because electrolysis is actually a pretty efficient process. If you think this sounds like free energy, hold on, because here's where the bitter part begins, the real costs of electrolysis. And it is insanely expensive in terms of energy. To electrolyze just one liter of water you need about 4.5 kilowatts. Doesn't sound too bad, until you remember that's per second, because the generator runs continuously. One hour has 3600 seconds. So, 4.5 kilowatts per second becomes 16,000 kilowatt consumed during one hour. 
that's 16 megawatt hours. Meanwhile, in vanilla, the generator only requires 500 kilowatts. So here is the catch. Ice is not the limiting factor of your shiny ships. It is the energy needed to process it. And that's not even everything. You also need energy to melt the ice and compress the gas. And that's exactly what I implemented in the h 2 real mod. Generators need both fair amount of power and ice to work. Even more, to melt ice, they first use their own temperature. Only if it drops to 0 degrees Celsius do they switch on electric heaters, increasing power demand. So don't hesitate to transfer heat from your poor batteries or other heat sources, you'll save some energy. But that's only the half the story. On top of melting ice, you also have to compress the gas. And that consumes power too, though in a more realistic way. When tanks are empty, compression costs almost nothing. But as tanks fill up, compression costs increase. Which means having more tanks than you strictly needed is actually beneficial. Now let's look at where we actually use those gases. Hydrogen engines and thrusters. Did you know the most undervalued resource in space engineers is oxygen? We only use it for breathing. But in reality, all power production relies on oxygen. Because it's the most powerful oxidizer we know. Most of human energy comes from combustion. And space engineers shouldn't be any different. Combustion is just oxidation process, so you need an oxidizer badly. And the quality of that oxidizer affects how much energy you get even more than the fuel quality. So in h 2 real anything that burns fuel also consumes oxygen. Hydrogen equipment is no exception. Let's start with the H2 engine, because it's simpler. In vanilla it requires 500 liters of hydrogen per second and produces 5 megawatts of power. Is that realistic? Well, maybe. If we magically had the world's first 100% efficient combustion engine with no moving parts or friction. Because yes, one liter of hydrogen can release about 3 watts of power during combustion. Which gives us around 1500 watts per second from 500 liters throughput. And during hour it will be 5.4 megawatt, which correlates to vanilla 5 megawatt hour. But in reality, the best combustion engines are only about 35% efficient. So, since this is the future and Space Engineers is still a game, I decided to treat the hydrogen engine as 50% efficient. That means it now requires 1000 liters of hydrogen per second to produce 5 megawatts, along with 500 liters of oxygen. Remember, oxidizer is important. The result of this change is that now you need more than three hydrogen engines to power just one generator. While one generator can barely keep up with one engine. And you know what? That's fair. But engines are just the easy part. With it balanced, it's time to look at hydrogen thrusters, where things get a lot more complicated. Thrusters are tricky, because thrust depends on two parameters. The flow volume and the flow speed of the exhaust. Volume is just the amount of hydrogen and oxygen you supply. But speed, that depends on nozzle efficiency and lots of other factors. I was tempted to model all these parameters in the config, but in Space Engineers we can't actually change nozzles or thruster designs. So in the end I kept it simple, just one efficiency parameter, like with hydrogen engines. And yes, thrusters now require oxygen as well, because that's realistic. What's also realistic about thrusters now? is that they produce a meaningful amount of thrust. They're not magical now. 
and once you put all that together, I believe managing hydrogen energy in space engineers becomes much more interesting. You, my brave engineers, will now have to learn staged launches if you want to reach space. Good luck with that and I'll see you in the next video of this series, where we'll balance nuclear reactors. And if you'd like to join a community of realism seek engineers, you'll find the link to my Discord in the description.